My name is Specialist McNabb. I'm the communications guy for the Missouri 3rd Battalion 2nd Brigade. And uh, today I'm going to talk about emergency communication. So just to kind of recap what we've talked about, you, you want to have good clean water, you want to make sure you keep yourself clean, you want to have food to eat, you, when you're in an emergency, you want to make sure that you have the supplies you need uh, for first aid. But then the next part is community. How do you communicate with your community? How do you keep in touch with your family, your friends, the people around you, how do you find out what's going on? Um, we're used to in the United States because we have such good communications, uh, knowing pretty much what's going on nationwide, knowing pretty quickly, knowing a lot of the wrong things pretty quickly. But um, the important thing though is that that's, our uh, communications infrastructure may not be quite as, as uh, robust as, uh, as it seems right now. Right now I can put my cell phone on and I can talk to somebody around the world. But what happens when the cell towers are down? That happened in Hurricane Katrina. A good friend of mine, I wasn't able to talk to him for several days because there was no phone service. Once the phone service came off, it was spotty. It was hard to get on. All those sort of things are uh, uh, part of what we want to uh, consider as we're making our emergency plans. So as an overview, I want to talk about what emergency communication is. And that is basically, uh, we want to know about staying in touch. If people want to stay in touch with their family, that's been affected, it'll give you the opportunity to say, I'm okay. And then all your friends will know that you're okay. That's a great way to use a cell phone to quickly let everybody know what your status is, and it'll also generally know what your, your, uh, what your, uh, what your location is. Now, I actually had a real-world situation like this. We have clients in France who are in the area where the recent French uh, 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 terrorist attack. So within a few moments, most of our clients and friends had checked in on Facebook, and within an hour, all of them had. <clears throat> so they were actually all well wired together. We had four or five people, and then um, you know, we knew not to worry about them. Not that we could have done anything about it, but I can imagine all of their family and friends there in France would have been, uh, France and Belgium would have liked to have known that they were okay. Uh, another one, uh, when you're using your cell network, short message service, SMS, or texting, that is actually a better way to communicate when there's a lot of traffic going on. The reason I say that is two things. If you got a busy signal, you will call in again and get an open line. If you use short messaging service, it'll sit in a queue until it gets through, and then it'll go through. So you can set up the message to send, and the recipient will get it. You can also tell multiple people at the same time using a uh, using your text. So everybody, does everybody hear text? Mm -hmm. Anybody not text? Okay, well then you, somebody be like, oh yeah, I'll do a text. Uh, you want to keep your voice call short and do leave a voicemail. I hate leaving voicemail because that means, you know, I got to talk more. But leave a voicemail and include status, location, and next step. This is what I'm going to do next. All right. Some of the equipment you want, we talked about this, keep a spare USB battery. It's less than 10 bucks in some cases. I went to Deals, and they've got, uh, it's kind of like green and black. It's a unit in, um, it's a unit in uh, uh, battery pack. It was like five bucks, and I can charge my cell phone twice off of it. All right, keep that charged up. Keep it in your car, or take it, put it in your purse, or, or your man purse, or uh, your go bag. That's, I'm sorry, not a man purse, your go bag. Uh, get it out there. Um, the critical information you want to look for is the milliamp hours. It's going to be called MAH. And the more the better. Um, I would say I used to carry around these 1,200 milliamp hour batteries. That's like good for half a charge with these modern smartphones. So look for one that's like 10,000 or more. But again, those prices are really coming down. I will say if um, to keep around the house or keep in the truck one of these Jumpstart batteries, that thing, that thing has a lot of uses for it. And you can see this particular model. And I'm not recommending this one. I'm just showing you as an example. This particular model will allow you to actually jack directly in and charge your devices. All right. So what's up, what's next? How do you find those things out? Well, one of the things is keep a battery operated radio. I know that sounds simple, but most of us are used to just, you know, listening to, you know, how many of us listen to stuff on their cell phone? I do. 
I haven't listened to Rush Limbaugh on the actual air unless I'm in the car, you know, or I listen to podcasts, whatever you have it on. But you know what? Uh, I've got a battery operated uh, radio sitting around just waiting uh, in case you know I don't don't have cell service. Um, you also when you're when you uh, you know why Camo X is at eleven twenty? It's a clear channel station. That was actually set up for emergency communications back uh, many, many years ago. There's not a whole lot of stations next to it, so when there's an emergency, tune into Camel X, and all over the region, you'll be able to catch what's going on there. Uh, smartphone apps, um, go ahead and do a search. Download a weather, a weather alert application. It'll tell you when bad weather is heading your way. That's a good way of staying alert and aware. And finally, internet, social media, uh, social media, that's a way of finding out what's going on and what happens next. But I will give you this one <coughs> humongous caveat. Stick with authoritative, story, uh, authoritative uh, sources. Um, the, the reality is a lot of rumors fly around, and even from supposed news uh, stations, um, will put out inf erroneous information. So take things with a grain of salt and give preference not so much to what your neighbor said, but maybe from a source that you know to be authoritative and reliable. Does that make sense? Because, yeah. <laughs> you know, if it's on the internet, that's not necessarily true. Abraham Lincoln. Abraham <laughs> Lincoln. <laughs> 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 okay, uh, let's see. Now, if you're looking for a radio, if you're going to buy a radio, I recommend the free play radios. Now, I see some of you very wisely taking notes because this information is critical and important and, of course, extra special when it's coming from me. However, I will let you know that since we have your email addresses, we'll send you a link in a day or so where you can download all of these presentations as a single PDF, and then you'll be able to review them at your leisure. The notes you're taking now, these are the things that you think are most important, and that's great. But when you get these presentations in a PDF, you can review some of them, and if they prompt other questions, it'll help you out because I'm all about the communications. Okay, so uh, this is the equipment. I recommend the free play radios. The nice thing about the free play radios, I've got a radio you gotta crank and then it'll run, but you gotta stand there for like 20 minutes spinning this thing. The nice thing about the free play radios is they're on a spring. You can crank them up and let it go and it'll actually work for like 15 or 20 minutes uh, where you can listen in. Um, find them on Amazon, they're, they're a little expensive compared to just a crank. You can get a crank radio for like 15 bucks. A free play radio might cost you 35 or 40. But believe me, if the shit hits the fan, stuff hits the fan situation, doing this is gonna suck. So, anyway. Um, some of these radios will have a USB port for charging. That's gonna be really helpful because the cell phone, how a cell phone grid might come back up. And there's a lot of things you can do on your phone off the network, like a calculator or or uh, taking notes or taking pictures in case you need to for whatever reason, um, that'll be handy. And then finally, um, a lot of radios will have a generator or a dynamo on them. Those are probably my third choice, but as I said, they take a lot of spinning. Okay, so what's up, what's next? Is there a ham radio person here? If you can't, if the television's out, you can't hear much on the radio, is there a ham radio operator? How many of you driven around your neighborhood and saw that great big tower in the back of somebody's house? Okay, this guy's seen it. You probably haven't been looking for it, oh, yeah. but look up on there for like an old-fashioned television antenna. They got the <coughs> downsized one now. They got the downsized one, <coughs> right. But anyway, you can also check with the amateur radio, radio relay league, asking who the hands are in your neighborhood. If you know that guy, be nice to him. He's gonna be a big nerd, I can just tell you, because <laughs> ham nerds have nothing on radio uh, computer nerds, I can tell you. Um, but this one's old. Exactly, you know, bring him some Mountain Dew and Cheetos, he'll be your friend. And then uh, he's gonna be able to communicate all over the all over the planet, okay? And that would be absent, uh, absent some more authoritative sources would be an opportunity to find out more. Uh, these guys are trained for, they're very friendly. They actually, they do spend plenty of time on the radio talking to strangers. They're trained for emergencies. They're, you wanna know those guys before you need them. And um, obviously, uh, we're going to talk a little bit more about how you, too, can be a ham radio operator. <clears throat> also, a community bulletin board. If there's a disaster, find a local place, like a local park or a shelter, set up a, set up a bulletin board where you can put notes up. Okay? That's a great place. You know, you're going to be moving around. 
you know, if you put a note up on a bulletin board, I've actually got one in my neighborhood, um, right there at uh, Wilmington and uh, Arundas. There's a bulletin board that people post notices to. These are my two neighbors here. <laughs> Apparently didn't know about that. Um, local community and walkie-talkies. And we're gonna talk about this. They're excellent for short-range communications. In fact, uh, my two friends here, we're on a community watch, and we use walkie-talkies to stay in touch with each other as we're patrolling in the neighborhood. They're great when you're traveling in groups, but they really generally only work line of sight because they're short wave or, 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 uh, on UHF. We recommend this piece of equipment. This is what our militia unit uses for short range communication. A radio and an extra battery is less than 60 bucks. It comes with all kinds of accessories. We found it to be very tough. I've never broken one. Have you ever broken one? No, I don't think we ever busted one. And believe me, we tried. Um, <laughs> It does have extra power. I mean, it's an actually a fairly powerful radio for what it is. And it can be used by unlicensed users on certain, uh, on certain channels. Um, it'll also tune to AFM radio. You can get NOAA weather service where you can listen in. You can listen to police and fire bands. Uh, and as I said, we use that. And it's highly programmable. Other radio communications are citizens' band radios. Um, there's no device required. You can usually get them between 50 and 100 bucks. Keep it in the car. And uh, CB radio, the frequency will propagate over longer distances, like within a county or so, um, unless you know, your <coughs> charger has got one of those 3,500 watt CB radios that can talk to Mars, but that's really not necessary. Oh, let's circle back to the Balfang guidelines. Um, now, this is from my research, okay? that the multi-use radio service channels, you can use them on this, with this radio, as long as the power is set to one watt. The, this particular radio will go to one watt or five watts. The MERS is for two watts, so you can broadcast on <coughs> one watt and still be well within the guidelines. So we're on community watch using our radios. We'll have them dialed down to one watt and we'll use these channels. And you don't need a license. If you, um, if you, can, get a, you can get a license for a GMRS, uh, as long as one person in your family has a license, you can actually communicate amongst yourselves, and you can also run it at five watts. That means that you can talk further distances with that five watts. FRS, we don't family radio services. That's what those um, your baby monitors are running on. That sort of thing. And this thing, this radio is way too powerful for that. And finally, this. Radio will work on ham bands, but you need to have at least a uh, technician license or more to legally use it. Now, obviously, during an emergency, I don't think people will be running around with those little locator bands to find people illegally broadcasting. <laughs> okay. And theoretically, the Baofeng radio has not necessarily been licensed specifically for these bands. But again, as long as the power is low and you're using it appropriately, um, I, I that's what I'm going to do with Army Community Watch. So. Your mileage may vary. Uh, I'm not your lawyer. I'm just the guy talking to you about communications. All right. Um, so running through quickly, um, ham radio. Uh, we had all kinds of there's all kinds of situations that can happen that will cause, <coughs> as we were talking about earlier, an inability to communicate. And so the nice thing about ham radio is you can talk all over the world. And if you wanted to do this, you can set yourself up and have that communi two-way communications. Amateur radio really has helped out in a lot of disasters throughout our nation's history as far as just helping to communicate and coordinate, let people know what's going on. Answering those critical questions, what's up, what's next? Um, <clears throat> I'm able to run my ham radio off of my car battery and I'm able to get plenty of air. Um, I'm able to, I am able to communicate uh, as far away as, uh, I've communicated as far as Michigan for sure. I've actually gotten a, uh, response back from Michigan. I'm still figuring out all the details of how my antenna is tuned, but nevertheless, it is a powerful uh, way to do things. It's not really expensive to get your license either. Uh, you can also um, you can you can change your antenna and get a lot more range out of it. So for my family, um, we all have radios, and I have a J pole antenna where I'll go up and the top floor of my house. And I'm Raquel Higgins, please come to the checkout desk. Raquel Higgins. I'm able to communicate uh, quite a bit further distance um, with the 
with my family in an emergency. 37 miles or less? Uh, on a good day, uh, with good line of sight, I happen to live at a high at a high elevation, and so I can get quite a distance. I can get as far as, um, I've talked to my son Darren, as far away as probably about nine miles um, in some situations. I may have been, but I may have been using a little more power than all right, uh, your mileage may vary though. Uh, you wanna test all these things, you wanna try things out. I did a cross country trip with my mom and my buddy was driving her truck, or I was driving her truck, he was driving the, uh, the moving truck and those radios kept us in touch and it was very, very handy. Um, uh, you, can, um, you, you can get a ham radio for your vehicle, they're actually quite compact uh, and you can get a nice antenna for your vehicle. Um, you can also park one off on your, uh, look for these things when you're trying to find your ham radio buddy for your neighborhood. And of course, if you wanna go full nerd, you can use a rig like this. All right, um, and that is the end of my presentation. I'd like to invite uh, uh, Captain Hamilton up to uh, wrap things up.